One more to go before the NASCAR 2024 playoffs begin as we preview the Sunday night race in Darlington, the last Sunday all to NASCAR self before the NFL kicks off the following Thursday. And then it's wall-to-wall -wall NFL on Sunday competing with NASCAR. The Cookout Southern 500 coming up this Sunday night. How's it going, CJ? Going well. Uh, like you said, one race to go. I always love Darlington, and there's nothing better than a Darlington race at night. So I am looking forward to the end of the regular season with that one. Yes. Uh, we'll see how this goes because there was another spot taken away. Big surprise at Daytona and... You know, it was one of those races where you got you, you got what you paid for. I mean, there were tons of wrecks. It was Daytona at its best or worst, depending on how you look at it. And you know, I guess if if you know if it just would have been like a, a normal end to the race with normal drivers, capable drivers at the end battling it out for the win. It might have been a hell of a race from start to finish. I would have said, well, you know, that was great. But based on how that leaderboard looked and that final green-white checkered, it, I've, ne I've never seen anything like it. If you took Kyle Busch out of there, it was like, who? what is this? Who are, what the hell's a Rets laugh? I mean, <laughs> it was like... And then, of course, Harrison Burton gets the, the fortunate. Uh, all it was was one uh, lane was faster than the other at the right time. That's all it was. And, boy, Kyle Busch, Austin Dillon, Richard Childress, just not their year. <clears throat> wow, you can say that again. Yeah, <laughs> it's been terrible for them. We've, we've been talking about Kyle Busch getting better. Uh, we've been talking about Austin Dillon and Richard Childress overall, finding the mistakes that they've been making all this season, improving on them and starting to get results. Dillon gets the win. Unfortunately, um, he's not going to be in the playoffs because NASCAR took that away from him. His final appeal uh, was a failure as well. Kyle Busch, man, he was so close yet again. Um, could have won it um, in a Richard Childress car. We talked about that before the race. Uh, though from qualifying, you knew that Fords were going to be really tough to beat. The question was just who had Harrison Burton among the Fords, right? Uh, but yeah, Parker Retzlaff, very, very interesting that you brought him up. Yeah, he's a complete um, new name, unknown to, to this show, certainly. But uh, for those of you who've been following the Junior Series for quite a while, he's, uh, he's actually got some pretty good talent. So I anticipate Parker Retzloff coming up through the ranks. It's not gonna be you know next season or anything like that. And certainly last week was uh, kind of a fluke, uh, not, not a fluke fluke, but uh, he deserves it certainly. Uh, but I think um, his real opportunities are gonna come in the years yet to come. Okay. He don't look like no race car driver. I'll no, tell you that not. much. He does not fit Looks the like my account. He, is, he is skinny like me, he's got glasses. Uh, yeah, absolutely. He doesn't fit the, the NASCAR Cup Series driver mold one bit. Okay, so let's take a look at the standings. Following. You must have a really young accountant, too, because I think he also looks like he's 15. But that's <laughs> that's <possible>. true. <laughs> uh, okay, so there you go. Okay, so what? Do, what? how can Martin Truex not get in? I think he basically has to start the race, if I'm not mistaken. Um, there is, what, 40-some-ish uh, points that are possible on any given day, and then you add in, um, no, I, I, it'd be like 40-ish, right? Um, I mean, is he guaranteed, so, no matter what, as long as he starts the race, he's in the playoffs? I got to say so. I mean, with a 58-point clearance down to 16th, even if somebody wins and he finishes dead last, He's still going to get like a point, right? So I, I can't, I can't foresee anybody even tying him, let alone yeah. surpassing him at that point. All right, Gibbs, pretty much the same in a way, right? He's pretty safe. He's he's got to be relatively safe. He's got to, you know, if he scores one stage point in the first stage, it's all done for him. Yeah, he's going to be locked in. Okay, what about Busher at twenty one? Now he is definitely the one that it all depends on whether or not another driver without a win wins the race then he's completely screwed unless busher can find a way to pass 
Gibbs during the race and then put Gibbs in the, the bad spot. So what could what what would it take Busher to outpoint Gibbs in this race if someone steals a win like say Kyle Bush? Stage points. It's it's gotta be so for, for Chris Busher, I would think you'd play it relatively cautious to ensure that you pick up as many stage points as possible. Um, Gibbs, um, you know, he can be a little bit more flamboyant, a little bit more risky because all he basically needs to do is finish um, and he's going to get through. But in order for Chris Bush to put Ty Gibbs in the hot seat, Busher's going to have to finish inside the stage points, if not win both stages, at least a stage, and then finish, you know, top two probably in, in the other one. That will put the pressure on Ty Gibbs. Uh, and Gibbs has got to not finish in the stage point. So like I said before, if he, if Gibbs, he being Gibbs, ends up in the top 10 at the end of that first stage, it's basically over his spot is locked and then Busher's just got to hope that no new driver wins. Okay, so how does the points go? Is it is it just as simple as you get like a point for every place that you're in? Or I mean, exact, how, how does it work as far as how many points Let's get the stage points out of the way. If Busher were to finish in second, Gibbs were to finish in twenty-fifth. How many points can Busher make up on Gibbs just on the race results themselves? On the race results, if uh, Gibbs, not talking about the stage points, just the race results themselves. Say Gibbs finished last, he'd probably pick up a point, maybe, uh, depending upon how early he goes out. So bring him up to plus forty. If Busher say finishes second. Uh, he, he could very well tie and then it comes down to the tiebreaker because there's you know 40 ish points available at the top of the field and then you throw in the stage points on top of that okay uh, busher busher basically needs a, a point or he needs as many points to make himself comfortable or at least put the pressure on i should say because he's not going to be comfortable all night but to put the pressure on busher has to get those stage points yeah. or he's going to hope that gibbs exits the race extremely early okay. certainly the the impetus is all on gibbs to just be able to make laps not do anything uh, you know erratic if he's in the top 10 in the first stage he gets it out of the way and he can relax the rest of the night and go for the win if he wants to uh, but if he doesn't get stage points then he's just got to make sure that he finishes and as long as he's not the first car out of the race he's basically on his way through and really it's pretty much the same thing for Bubba against Busher without winning. It's he's 21 back. He has to, again, just let's say 22 is what he has to get. Um, and we're talking about Busher and Gibbs at 18. So right. w same thing. Bubba just needs to uh, and look, this is going to be the strategy. I guess he's going to have to find out what kind of car he has with qualifying and all that. Do I feel like I have a car to win the race well, that's what I'm worried about. I'm not going to try to get stage points that'll put me in a bad position to win the race because I really think I could win this race. Or I don't think I got a winning car, so I just I'm I'm just going out and getting as many stage points. I don't care where it puts me, uh, result wise. Even though I got to try to make still some of that back at some point. Um, so really, that's what Bub is going to find out uh, before the race on Sunday if he has a winning car or not. Yeah, exactly right. And if you go back to the 18 point gap between Gibbs and Busher, if it, so Busher needs to get the stage points. But looking at Gibbs, like I said, everything is in his hands. If he's able to, like, if for whatever reason he has a very poor night, makes mistakes, as long as he doesn't exit the race, if he finishes in the top half of the field, he's through. I mean, you've got roughly 30 some, almost 40 cars. Uh, that come up there this week if uh, he finishes in that top half you know 18 plus uh, he's good and he's through regardless of what happens uh, with Busher but Busher's really got to come out swinging he's the one that's got all the pressure has to be scoring those stage points and like you said Bubba Wallace a little bit further behind he's got to be on the same playbook as Busher uh, and he's got to be hoping something else happens to Ty Gibbs at the same time okay and and again and, and what's just i'm sure most of everybody already uh heard about denny hamlin and what happened to him so uh he is now sixth in points uh where where, where would he be without this penalty uh if you add so he basically got docked 75 points so i think if you add that back to his total following daytona i think that would probably put him about uh third or fourth if i'm not mistaken 
Uh, so he basically lost three or four positions as a result of that penalty. I think wow. more importantly, though, yeah, it's pretty big. So he would have been in contention to potentially race for the regular season title. He's had such a good year. Um, but the, the real pain for him is the fact that they docked 10 playoff points as well. So when the points get reset after this week's race and they go back to, uh, you know, every, you know, he's going to have to carry that all the way through. So every round, every three races in the playoffs, those points reset. That's 10 extra points he could have had. It's not going to affect him in the early round unless for whatever reason he's one of those guys that ends up with very early trouble. But as you know, later on, as you get into the rounds, the more those points become important because not everybody can be winning those races. So uh, I think it's a big penalty. It's very frustrating. It was not Hamlin's, apparently not Hamlin's or Joe Gibbs Racing's fault. It was all on Toyota. Toyota publicly apologized to the organization as well as Hamlin, but it definitely put them in a more difficult spot and it's going to be more difficult the further they advance into the playoffs. Okay, so there you go. Now, let's take a look at what we're going to be dealing with this week. As far as the odds. And, and, and by the way, I have not, just the first time I have, I'm doing a show and I have no idea what the odds are. I think the first time I, ever. I'm so, going to guess who the top two are, though. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to guess. Yeah, that shouldn't be hard. Uh, so, but anyway, first of all, uh, this this will be the 127th race at Darlington. They raced in May in the Goodyear 400. Kozlowski won from the second position. He led 37 laps. What I really found was interesting of that, but that race, uh, and this is why qualifying matters at uh, Darlington, is that Reddick led the most laps, 174, from the pole. Uh, Gibbs led 34 laps, which was third most, from the fourth position. Busher led 21 laps, which was fourth most from the third position. And as I said, Kozlowski was from the second position. So the top four in laps led uh, were all in the top two rows to start the race in the Goodyear 400. Now, Kozlowski was a Ford. So Ford had three of the top five plus the winner. Chevy did not have a driver in the top five, just two in the top 10. Toyota, of course, mentioned Reddick and Gibbs were pretty strong uh, at least early so it's looking like it's one of those at least for now and it's i think it's if, if anything it, it's it's open just but regarding those stats but toyota hasn't won in the last five so i think that's important um and then when you're talking about uh pole positioning six of the last eight have started in the top eight including three in the top row, a pole and two seconds, even though we've only had one pole sitter win since 2015. That was Joey Logano back in 2022. And even to make it bigger, in the last 28 races, 75% of the winners started in the top 12, the top six rows. That's 21 of the last 28. The ones on the outside two 13s, two 15s, a 16 and 18, and a 23. <clears throat> so uh, I guess you agree with uh, how important pole positioning will matter in this race. Darlington is very much a track position track there. You have to race the track, so you've got to have a fast car, you've got to have a powerful car, but you have to have a car not only one that handles extremely well because they're two very unique turns and it has very unique some would call it progressive banking i call it stepped banking um but darlington's also extremely tough on tires so you've got to have a setup that is easy on your tire tires that gives you the most grip throughout an entire fuel run and if you look at the race that we had there earlier in the spring uh, most of the runs were long runs there were only uh, six total cautions uh, two stage breaks obviously so it wasn't like you know uh, earlier um, Daytona last week or whatever I almost said yesterday but I guess it was two days ago or maybe three days ago uh, since it was Saturday night but you've got to be easy on tires you've got to be easy on your equipment and it's a really hard track to do that uh, without making a mistake so it's all about track position it's all about getting that set up for your car right and right early on the weekend so that you can qualify up front if you're up front you definitely have the advantage here were my notes uh, from the spring race 
Uh, Kozlowski wins a late three-car duel between Reddick and his teammate Busher. Uh, Reddick slammed into Busher, who was leading at the time, with about 12 laps to go. Both lost a tire and had a pit, leaving Kozlowski to win. Does that sound right? Sounds absolutely right. Hard r- racing at the front. One of those times where Tyler Reddick was in competition for the win, uh, but uh, kind of bit off more than he could chew, kind of choked a little bit and ended up with that contact. I remember the pair having words on um, pit road and Ty- Tyler Reddick being very um, recalcitrant, really you know, apologetic to, to Busher about what had happened and intended to happen. Both cars were taken out. Kozlowski had a good car, had a good car throughout the, the day and was there to capture the win. Uh, this track as well seems to favor a certain type of driver. It requires a certain type of approach. So it's not one of those tracks, usually speaking, where somebody who has not been good at it in the past suddenly gets the setup right. It's one where you get it early and you have it forever. It's not one that you, you know, kind of build up to over time. Uh, let's see. And the cars that I thought were the best, uh, obviously Reddick had to be, um, Kozlowski. Uh, I also had uh, Gibbs. And um, I had Byron, Blaney, Truex, Larson, and Logano in there. And I, I do have the note regarding Byron uh, causing Blaney and Truex to get taken out. I forget what happened in that situation. But um, noting that Truex and uh, Blaney actually uh, had decent cars that day. But, uh, you know, Byron must have done something. And uh, it interrupted the finish. And, of course, Truex has a good uh, history here. Blaney does not, um, even though he uh, uh, even though he had finished ninth in both races last year. So Blaney might have had three straight top tens at this track if it wasn't for, I guess, this incident with uh, Byron. But still a big difference between maybe fantasy-wise as a top ten as opposed to winning a race, which I still think Blaney is uh, uh, probably not ready to do here. Okay. So let's go ahead and well, let me just guess here who's going to be the favorite. Let's see. All right. So, um, well, the defending champs, Kyle Larson. So there you go. <laughs> uh, so yeah, got, there's no way it's not Kyle Larson. <laughs> so Kyle Larson is the favorite. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I probably would have to go with Hamlin. Um, based on the fact that he's got four wins and a fourth this year. And in this uh, race last year, he led 177 laps. So, yeah, it's it's it's, it's probably Larson and Hamlin. Would that be correct? Absolutely got to be correct. I haven't looked either, so it'll be news for me. Oh! No. Wow, how about that? Finally some respect. There's Reddick. Larson. Yeah. And there's yeah, Hamlin. There yeah, I was going to put Reddick next right after and Larson and Hamlin. So yeah. we were close enough. We just missed Reddick, right? Yeah, uh, I would have put Reddick. Uh, I would have thought he would have been like, at, say, six fifty, uh, if if they would have been at five fifty. Not that I disagree with this, because of the fact that Reddick, of course, as we said, was the dominant car this year, and in last year's race, he finished second, leading ninety laps. So he's led one hundred and sixty-four laps in the last two races, and would have probably finished no worse than second. Or no worse than third, but probably second if it wasn't for the screw up late uh, earlier this year. So it might have been no worse than back to back finishes. And he's still, of course, if you look at it overall, I mean, just is, is him with this uh, next gen car is really what changed things because he didn't have much going pre next gen. But since the next gen, that's when he's really been doing well. And uh, we're not going to count what happened at Daytona as, a, as, as some sort of bad deal. Uh, to, to say that Tyler Reddick's hot streak is over because of everybody pretty much got wiped out at Daytona except Kyle Busch uh, as far as, you know, some of the legitimate drivers and, and Christopher Bell, you know, e- even though Christopher Bell, I mean, who knows what, what would have happened to Brad Kozlowski if he wasn't stupid enough to uh, jump the gun on the restart too. So, yeah, you know, he might have actually been up there. Okay, so there you go. These are the top three. Again, Larson's defending champ. Uh, keep this in mind, though. Uh, with the next gen, he's only had one top five. That was the win last year from the 18th position. And in the next and, and in the next gen, though, he has led laps of 29, 30, and 35. 
But pre-next gen, five top fives out of eight, three runner-ups, and has led laps of 124, 156, and 284. That's a big difference. So even though Larson's got a win last year, he's been much better pre-next gen than he has next gen. And so at 550, I would I would I would definitely go Reddick over Larson. And then with Hamlin, um, I I'd, I'd probably go with Hamlin as well over Larson. Again, we just talked about it. Hamlin's last two trips there, his four overall wins. So I'd probably go Reddick, Hamlin, Larson. I am the exact same as you on this, and I think both I would take as a wide margin over Larson. Larson's been really inconsistent this year. Yeah, he's won a lot of races. Yeah, he's been good at here, good here um, uh, in the past, but not as good and consistently as a Hamlin and a Reddick. And I think if you, you just you know think of Hamlin in particular, one, two, three, four, five times out of his 24 starts, so more than 20% at the time he's led over 100 laps at this track um that is huge he's got four wins he's done it in the old car he's done it in the new car uh reddick he's that light switch that i talked about earlier this is not a track where you build up to slowly over time it's something that you get and once you get it you got it and reddick got that with the new generation of car uh so i think both of those guys are head and shoulders over larson who seems to have lost it over uh, this season in terms of consistency but then also like you pointed out at this track old car versus new car all right so next up i'm gonna say it's gonna be byron and i don't know if they'll do this but i'll say kozlowski what do you think okay. My my top choice for next is going to be Kozlowski because everybody's got last week in their mind and he won in the spring. Yeah, and he's also in his last four at Darlington: first, sixth, fourth, and seventh. Uh, Byron, meanwhile, last four: sixth, for, uh, fourth, first, eighth. So his one was last year, the first race. Only led seven laps though. He's only led eighty-six laps in twelve races. So you got to keep that in mind. And I'll probably put Bell in there too. Just I was going to say, I'd yeah. probably put Bell ahead of Byron, to be honest with you, if uh, if we look at the next three, just because uh, Bell's got a handful of top tens here as well. He's got a pole position, if I'm not mistaken. So I, I think fans will probably have that in their mind uh, versus uh, William Byron, who's been a little bit quiet recently this season. Yeah, Bell got the pole in this race last year, leading 40 of the only 56 laps he's ever led at this track just one of those by the way top tens are a top five so and his average is 16.4 so i don't like him in the race but we know how las vegas is going to be so i agree with you uh, kozlowski bell and then byron or bell kozlowski byron i say kozlowski bell byron okay let's see people are smart we'll see byron uh, you were right you were right how about that gibbs are you crazy <laughs> wow no way no way I'm biting on that one. Good, yes, but not that good. <laughs> and Kozlowski. So they did not give Christopher Bell so far out, out of this the props. Maybe he's 9-1. It's impossible. But Gibbs. All right, yes, as we said, he led 34 laps, finishing second this year. Never had a top 10 before that. That's important. And he's <laughs> yep. never won a cup race. Very, that's very important. <laughs> yes. So, I mean, forget it. You know, you'd like to go, all right, Gibbs, he's 15 to 1. All right, let me let me think. All right, but no. no not, not on a Tuesday at 9 to 1. <laughs> totally agree. Yeah, Gibbs is out of the question for me. I, You know, 15 to 1 probably is, is more accurate. I mean, if, if you look at this race last year, he was only 21st. It was this year, this spring, where he happened to have the good qualifying position. And like you said, if you were in those top two rows, you were able to lead laps, and he got out there for 30 lap, 34 laps. And like you said, at the end of the race, um, it was Busher and Reddick that were <clears throat> battling, and Kozlowski sailed through. Uh, so if you put those two guys back in the mix, you've got Gibbs finishing maybe just inside the top five. Yeah, good point. And... Uh... All right. And he's driving a Toyota. He's driving a Toyota. Now, we'll, we'll be okay with Denny Hamlin is driving a Toyota. But 
when Toyota is not doing all that, they're doing okay, but they're, they're still, still 0 for 5. And I mean, the only thing is, is Redick, you know, uh, kicked ass uh, and probably should have won, but he didn't. So, okay. It's got to be Bell, right? Well, let's see who the next three would be. I'm going to say Bell. I'll put Truex in there. And who, who, who do you want to put, Pusher? Or Elliot? Uh, I'm going to say... Chastain's Bush. actually done pretty well there lately, too, but I don't think they put him up this high. Busher, Elliot, and probably Bell. Busher, Elliot, Bell. So no Truex. No Truex for me. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll put Truex in there then. Bell, Truex, and... I'll do Busher. All right, let's see. Truex. 11 to 1. Still not worth it. No. <laughs> Bell. There we go. So, Elliot or Busher? This is I the. Take, I would take Busher over both of those guys. Come I on. hope Busher's not here. <laughs> I want Busher further back now. True, yeah. A Kyle. Wow. Now, you know what this is about. This is. Yep. See, Kyle was actually the, the, the race. Uh, co-favorite on Saturday night. That's only for one reason. Okay? That's it. And it's the same thing here, why he's even getting this much respect. Everybody knows what's going on. There's one more chance for him to get in. That's it. Because if you look at Kyle, and look, I'll, I, I'm going to take him just because of the same reason. And, and the odds at 14-1 to 1 are okay enough. But I mean, what should he be? Probably more like 18 to 20 based on the season he's having. He was 27th in this race this year. He's got one win at Darlington out of 25. One. Uh, six top fives. He's led about 900 laps. So he's definitely being overvalued here. And then you got Truex at 11. And look, he does have two wins. As I said, his result earlier this year would have been better if he didn't get uh, uh, screwed up uh, by Byron. But his next-gen average is 25.8 because he's had two wrecks and a DVP. But he's led 221 laps with the next-gen. Uh, and so, yeah, it's just at 11 to 1. I, I think I think he should be like 14 to 1 because you're basically giving the same odds as Christopher Bell. And, and Bell is just killing him this year overall. It's just not even a contest who's a better driver this year or a better team, Bell, Bell over Truex, even though Bell does not have a great history like we talked about, but it has been better recently, which is all that counts, really. Yeah, the, these three, I, if, so if, if we're just limiting it to these three, certainly Kyle Busch is at the top, without question, and Bell uh, second, and then Truex after for all the reasons that you stated, plus the fact that Truex here uh, specifically hasn't finished inside the top five since this race back in 2021. Uh, so he's not been, <clears throat> you know, take this season out of it. Just at this track over the past several years, he's he's not been able to convert it into a finish. I do think um, Bush probably uh, can be a top 10 contender. I'm not sure that he's got the edge um, at a place like this with the equipment that they've got to overcome somebody like a Denny Hamlin, somebody like a, uh, even a Chris Buescher, quite honestly, I, and a Tyler Reddick. I think they've just got better cars that are better suited for setups that are better suited for this track. Uh, yeah, Kyle Busch is pretty decent here, and that's why I'm saying I think he's a top 10. And if things fall his way, yeah, anything can happen, but um, I would want a little bit better just based on the fact that, like you said, the only reason that he's 14 to one right now over somebody like Busher is the fact that he's got one more chance to be able to make his way into the playoffs. Okay, we still have Blaney, we still have Elliott, and we still have Busher. Busher's got to be next, right? I'd take all three of those guys over these last three. And then also uh, Logano and uh, let's see, Logano and Wallace and Chastain. Maybe that's the next three. So that's got to be okay. Let's see. Is Blaney Blaney. sixteen? Is Joey? We got no even tied. Is sixteen? So Ford, Ford, Ford at six. Not bad. Uh, but yep. Busher's in a good spot there. I like Busher clearly, 
at 16 to 1. And uh, he was 10th and 3rd last year and led 21 laps from the 3rd position this year when, as we said, he was that close to winning. So not bad. And you're getting 16 to 1. All right. So yeah. who Clearly. would you take out of this group? Busher, right? Clearly? Bush. Busher, without question. And uh, keep in mind, uh, even though you, you got to throw last week out because, like you said, everybody got crashed, but he was having a good day. Uh, this would be the week to bank on Joey Logano based on his trends this season to have a down race. Ah, oh, there you go. All right. Uh, Elliot's name hasn't been called, has it? Has not. So no Elliot. Really? No Elliot? Okay. Wow. No Elliot. Here we go. <laughs> Elliot. <laughs> 18. 18. Wow. So, yeah, Elliot has never won here and has never led a lap with the next gen. Even though his last three results are 12th, 8th, and 3rd. It's not that bad for 18 to 1, but yeah, this is his, he's not hot right now. So, next, what do you think, Bubba? Uh, Chastain? I'm going to say Wallace because of the championship bubble. Yeah. Last four for Bubba at Darlington. Seventh, seventh, fifth, and ninth. So he has been really good here without winning. Ross no. Chastain. Another one that needs a win. And Bubba. So Chastain, also not bad lately. Uh, this year, wrecked, but led 93 laps from the fifth position. So again, you know, you bottom line it. I mean, last year. This was in last year's race. Well, uh, this was actually in last year's spring race. Spring. Yep. But last year's race, he was fifth. And this year, he was 11th. So that's not bad. Basically, led 93 laps in one race, finished fifth in another, finished 11th this year. He needs the win. And you're getting 22 to 1. And Wallace, we, we went over his. So... I, I feel good about taking both Chastain and Wallace with you know with some long shot you know a couple of bucks there for those guys. Yep, I completely agree, and I'd be comfortable taking them on Tuesday as well, not waiting to find out what happens. Uh, those of you interested or thinking about Chase Elliott, he has been pretty decent here, um, and he's been pretty decent when he's had really crappy qualifying. So, <clears throat> despite the fact that he finished third, eighth, and twelfth the last three races, he started twenty first. 13th and 31st wow. but he, he is able to move through the field that's not common uh, so he knows how to get the setup right for this track and be able to work his way through traffic if he qualifies well his odds are going to drop uh, but if he qualifies well he's probably going to be in store for a really good push alright and now we'll go through the rest wow Eric Jones we know he's got a good record here but that's crazy that's you're not getting any break there on Eric Jones. Of course, we know he needs the wins just like everybody else, but uh, that's a big difference. I mean, he's normally 100 to 1 every week, and he's getting 35 to 1. He's won this race twice. We get that. Um, his average finish is just 12.4, which is excellent over 13. It's probably his best track. Again, get that. But he was 19th earlier this year. He hasn't done anything to improve this year. I just, I'm just not getting value there. But it's a big number, so if you want to take them, sort of like what we said about Dylan the other the other day, it's still a number where if you want to put a buck or two on him because he's your favorite long shot, then by all means do that because the fact is, there's just once you get to this grouping and, and the rest of the drivers we're going to go through, there really aren't, because like of what you said before, it's like it, it, these guys are long shots because they don't have a history here and they're not just going to turn it around in one race. So in that respect, if you are looking for a long shot, maybe Eric Jones is the longest shot you go. I don't know. Yeah, um, I, I would like Eric Jones probably more like 75-ish um, area. If you're going to go long shot, though, really, then you just brought him up on the screen, Noah Gregson. He hasn't done much in Cup. His average finish through two races at this track is uh, 20th. But if you look at his Xfinity series stats... First, second, first, fourth, seventh, fifth, and eighth. Noah Gregson knows this track. Noah Gregson's 
got a lot to race for. Um, I wouldn't put him out of the out of the question. He'd probably be my top long shot. I like it. Sold me. All right. Uh, and then uh, you've got Barry, who did finish third this year. Uh, probably would have been sixth around there, but still, he had a good race this year, considering he started 33rd. Uh, there you got Briscoe, who was fifth this year, best race. So there's a couple of drivers that have had good finishes this year. Uh, Bowman, uh, looking at uh, his way, I, I don't see anything uh, with Bowman except just uh, one top five and an eighth place finish this year. So again, same thing. Bowman, Barry Briscoe had good races this year, but Bowman has not has only led one lap in his last eight races at Darlington. Um, Van Gisbergen's here. There, then you got all the rest of the long shots. Any of these other long shots that uh, you would even? Nope. Yeah. Me either. <laughs> I'm not seeing nope. anything. Not at Darlington. No. Uh, just so you know, let's see. Where's Austin Dillon? He's at 150. He does have a runner-up in 2020. He's got five top tens out of 16, but he has never led a lap ever at Darlington. So, okay, there you go. So let's go to our picks. What you gonna do, CJ? I am gonna go. Let's see. So my top choice will be Reddick. Um, I'd like him a little bit better, but he's just been so good recently. Kind of hard to pass that up. I think he's overcome some of his struggles from earlier in the year. My mid-pack pick is going to be Busher, and then my long shot is going to be Gregson. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you on Reddick. Uh, Kozlowski winning the same race twice in a season. I'm not going to go for that. So... I will go. You're, you like Busher too. I tell you what I'll do. I'll take. Uh, I'll take Wallace and Chastain. So I'll do Reddick, Wallace, Chastain. You'll do Reddick, Busher, and Gregson. All oh, excellent choices. What's that? All excellent choices. Oh, of course, yes. That's because we're excellent <laughs> analysts. Okay, so that'll wrap it up for our NASCAR coverage.